this is Elizabeth welcome back to live craft and love um, today I'm going to be working on my very very first mini album tutorial and as you can see here my voice is still kind of recovering uh, it's a little bit better than yesterday um, but it's still kind of hoarse I presented all day today at a technology conference so I really didn't get to rest my voice but I think it's still a little bit better than what it was um, so this mini album is going to measure, the outer cover is going to measure six and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I'm going to actually divide this into several parts. Probably the first part is going to be the construction of the cover itself and maybe possibly the hinge. And then I would be working on the pages for part two. Um, so we'll see how long it takes um, for me to film this. Um, again, it's my very, very first tutorial, so uh, bear with me and hopefully everything comes out great. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need two 12 by 12 chipboard pieces and uh, cut them in a length of six and three quarters. And I'm going to cut this twice, flip it over, line it up again. Now I am using the you, We Are Memory Keepers um, cut board and scoreboard, two in one, so I know it's not the Fiskers that you guys usually see on YouTube channels, but it works. And then by seven and three quarters, so seven and three quarters, oops, that's one, two, flip it over, seven and three quarters. And there you go. So um, to save a, a, a little bit of time, I had already pre-cut one. So here they are, the front and the back cover. So we'll put this off to the side. Now I did learn a little thing from Frances from um, Your Book of Memories. She, she did say that she uses her old um, blade to use to cut the chipboard. That way the, the blade for the paper doesn't get messed up. I found this to be very, very useful because I've been I was messing up blades left and right. Now for the spine, we're going to need a piece that measures two and a half by seven and three quarters. So we're gonna line this up. Let's see, let's do the seven and three quarters first. Seven and three quarters. Flip it over. Seven and three quarters. And now two and a half. Two and a half, set, and your two front and back cover. So these are the two pieces that we're needing. Now we are going to use um, all these scraps. You're gonna put them away. That can be useful for another tiny mini album. Um, now we're going to be using. You're going to need two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. And whoops, I'm dropping everything here. And the one I'm going to be using is from Paper Studio. This 12 by 12 pack. Um, all you're going to be needing is two of them. Let me go ahead and open this up. We're at two. Put this away. I'm going to put this uh, scoreboard away for a while. And I need to now adhere these two pieces to each other. And I'm going to use a uh, quarter inch score tape. One fourth inch only because I don't have half an inch and now I'd be using that. So quarter inch score tape and I'm going to adhere two strips right here on the edge and adhere one on top of the other just like so. Um, because the um, we, this is what we're going to use to wrap our cover in. And if I could just find, there it is, where this roll starts. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to get to the edge just close as possible and second part 
You don't have to be completely precise. It could be crooked. Um, as long as it's there. And you take your bone folder, burnish that real well so that way it stays there. Now, um, I'm going to use my exacto knife. I don't have any nails, so pull that out. Now I'm going to lay this directly on top of this. Try and be as straight as possible so that way your cover isn't crooked. So as soon as you see that it's laid on there, flatten that out and just give it a good burnish with your bone folder. I like flipping it over as well. And this is what's going to be used to um, cover our cover I mean to wrap our cover in um, you do not need the full 12 inches um, wide here so what I usually do is I like trimming my uh, my cover not trimming I'm sorry I like scoring it at one inch here and one inch on top that way I have some form of like a um, line set so I can line up my chipboard and then I go ahead and I trim everything else and then turn it and score line it up and score it on this way no I know it ran off so I'm just gonna flip my paper over and keep scoring down one inch up to where it meets right here so as you can see now I have a one inch border here and a one inch border there and this is exactly where I'm going to line up my uh, paper. Um, what The main reason, the main one that I wanted to line up is this bottom one and then later on I'm just going to trim the rest off. So I can remove this for now. I'm going to get my chipboard and just line it up to make sure that everything sits well. Now here where the paper did it here, I want to make sure that my spine is right smack in the middle. You never want to have this right here lined up with your spine because this is what's going to be bending and this will eventually tear or fall apart. So you want to make sure that your spine is always in the middle of your two pages that you know got stuck together. And then this and this um, front and back cover, you're always going to have two chipboard piece um, in width to go ahead and um, separate the two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab, you know, the pieces of scraps that, you know, I just use two pieces of scraps and I'm going to place them like this and this is what gives you the correct spacing that you need for your chipboard, just like that. And then this side as well. But first I'm going to go ahead and um, put my double-sided uh, adhesive or tape, my score tape, around the perimeter of the pieces and then lay them out. So as you can see, I'm going to have a very good amount left over right here and this is what we're going to trim. I just run it really the main line to be on the bottom so I can line it up uh, pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the score tape and line the perimeter of my chipboard. as close to the edge as possible and then down the middle I'm going to add a few strips I always like putting a good amount of adhesive on this because it is what it keeps the book sturdy okay so after that give it a good finish And do the same thing to the front and back cover. Now I'm going to make my get my bone folder, give it a good furnish to make sure that it doesn't take the chipboard off along with it. Same thing over here. You always want to varnish your score tape. Okay, so we're set with that. Now, like I said, first piece that's going to go down is going to be your spine. Oops. 
I need to trim this a little bit. There we go. So the first thing that's going to get it here is the spine, and I'm going to try and my eyeball it right in the middle. So I'm going to get my take the backing off. And you see how it just pulls out very easily, and that's due to the furnishing that we just did. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to eyeball it and make sure that it is in the middle and lined up with my score line right there. Make sure that it's straight. So I'm going to. That looks pretty good. Okay. Give it a brush. Now for the other two, this is where I'm going to use the extra two pieces of uh, chipboard and make sure that I use two chipboards with to separate them. So first I'm going to take off the backing of the chipboard. Taking me a little while. And last piece. I'm going to get now my um, two pieces of chipboard, line them up, and I'm going to line this up as straight as possible to the score line again. Let me get in frame there. And I'm going to line it up as straight as I can to the score line that's already there, using this as a width guide. Now, after a while, you don't use this anymore, and you pretty much eyeball it, but I'm new to this. I'm using all the tricks that I can. Okay, so that looks about right. There we go. Finish that. Let me clean up house here a little bit. And now to adhere the back cover. So let's take off the backings, take off the backings. And I really hope you guys can hear me on this um, with my voice the way it is. It's kind of frustrating, but I didn't want to wait to put up a tutorial until my voice came back. I've been waiting to do this tutorial. Actually, I've been waiting for it. Now that I have that um, Authentique Meadows paper, and that's what I'm going to be using to mat this project. Oops, there you see some of the tape got up there. So, here I am. Okay, so again, I'm done with this. Now I'm going to get my two pieces of chipboard again. Separate them, use them to separate, and use the score line as a guide to make sure it's lined up nice and straight. And here we go. Oops. Let's start there. So give it a good furnish. Flip it over. Give it a good varnish. And there we go. Now as you can see, there's a huge space here and a huge space on the lines. I usually like to have like about an inch of wrapping on the chipboard. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this to about an inch. I'm going to eyeball my uh, chipboard to the number one, just like that right here. And I'm going to trim the paper. Now, before I do that, I'm done trimming chipboard, so I can easily take this out Oops. and add my new one. Okay, go back to lining it up. It's about right there. Turn it off. So 
same thing over here. Line it up to about one. It's a little over one, and that's okay. And trim that off. And now this side is going to be a little bit more difficult because it stops right here. So I'm gonna have to do this kind of like in two parts. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just score it and cut it with my scissors. Because unlike the Fiskars, this one stops. So I'm just going to score down, flip it. Eyeball where the score line is. Let's score it again. And now I'm just going to trim that line off with my scissors. It gives it a little bit more of a cleaner look, I think, to do this. There we go. That's what we have now. About an, an inch border all the way around. Now, um, one thing that I did also learn from a couple of people is that we um, trim or miter the, the corners. And um, I did see a few people who would trace the um, edges right here. So that way you know where to stop with your score tape. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay, so I'm going to use another piece of scrap chipboard and I'm just going to lightly draw a line just like that. And that's what I'm going to be cutting off. Oops, I kind of, kind of drew it crooked there. And that's just a guide. Again, it's a guide just so that way I know where to line up my score tape. So now what I'm going to do, now what's next, is you're going to line up score, for, score tape from this to this end mark along the side right here, along the edge. Same thing on this side. Mirror to here. And same thing on the sides. From here to here. Oops, I'll trim that off right now. And from here to here. Now, it's okay if it's there. All it is is on that is the least amount of score tape I'm going to cut. Now, after that, I am going to line the perimeter of my cover. And inside here, just so that way it prevents any bubbles from forming. But I'm not going to do this part just yet. I'm just doing the outer perimeter of the front and the back cover. There we go. Easy peasy. Like that, and last side. Boom, we're done. Okay, so now give your score tape a good furnish, especially on this chipboard. You don't want it peeling off. Sides right here, also. Now, I always like going long ends first. To do this before we start wrapping it, we're going to trim right along this uh, line that we just drew. And this also gives us that eighth of an inch space. Let me trim this off so you can see what I'm talking about. You see like right there, there's an eighth of an inch, a little bit of a gap between the paper and the chipboard. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, now trim this corner. Corner. Trim the 
side sticking up. And in this corner. Okay, all of this is trash. Now, we're ready to wrap. What I do like doing is going along the edges of the um, album with my bone folder just so that way you can break up the fibers and the paper and it's a little easier whoops it's a little easier for you to um, fold the paper to wrap and I tend to kind of do this to it that way it gets to move I always do a top so I'm going to be flipping this around so I'm ready to wrap now I'm going to remove my backing backing, remove the backing, and remove the backing. Now I'm going to start from the middle, fold down, and press from the middle out. Oops. It's okay there. It's not going to get seen anyway. Make sure you burnish really well. And now repeat on the opposite end. Fold that in, get it working for you. And remove the backing. Remove it, remove it, and remove it. Let me turn this little part right here. And same thing. Start from the middle. Work your way up. Now the other ends. Same thing. Work it a little bit. Remove the packing. And remove the backing. Start from the middle. Oops, I completely skipped a step, but it's a good thing too because it is correctly. Now here, I completely forgot to let you guys know, make sure you tuck in these edges right here so that way you don't have a pointy end to your album. So tuck in the edges right here with your bone folder before you fold it. And I completely forgot to say that on the other one, but that's okay. No big deal. Okay. Now, if you notice here, I didn't skip a little piece right there, but that's okay because this is going to be matted with uh, design paper. And if you turn it around, the back cover, the cover is completely covered. So our corners are good. And like I said, first tutorial, bear with me, but I think it's not going, it's going not that too, not too bad. Now the next step is to lightly um, go over with your bone folder here in the gaps. That way this front and back cover can start moving the way you want them to. And there we go. Our front and back cover, our spine, everything's pretty much constructed in our album. Now the next thing we're going to work on is our hinge. So um, I'm going to pause the video right here, see how long I've been recording, and I might do the hinge along with it, or if not, I will go ahead and do a part two starting with the hinge construction. So we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 